Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming to our presentation. This is a presentation titled Take Control of Your Financial Wellness, which is part of our Many Matters series here at the Champaign Public Library. I'm Eva Leo, reference librarian at the library. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Well, I would like to introduce our presenter for the evening, Maggie Owen. Um, she is financial program manager for the Illinois State Treasurer's Office. She is passionate about ser serving others and provide access to financial education resources. So Maggie, with that, I'm going to turn it over to you. Awesome, thank you, thank you so much. Thanks for having me, thank you for being here. Um, as she mentioned, I'm with the Illinois State Treasurer's Office. I'm going to go through some of our programs that we offer. I will go a little bit quickly through those programs to make sure that we have enough time at the end because we will be doing a goal setting activity. Um, I also want to put out there, <laughs> uh, preface this with the, the programs at the beginning. I am not the program director, so I know uh, kind of baseline information about those programs. But if you have very specific and detailed questions, um, about those initial programs, I would recommend that you reach out to those program um, directors themselves. I'll have website links uh, listed on the slides. Um, so their website is the best place to start um, to reach out to folks. So let's go ahead and jump in. Um, if you didn't already know, Michael Frericks is our Illinois State Treasurer and he actually uh, I believe lives in Champaign. I know he's in, in the area frequently, and I know Eva mentioned that uh, he and his daughter like to come to the library here. So you may bump into him <laughs> at some point um, and may not even realize it. But he is the state's chief investment and banking officer, um, and he does manage um, approximately $52 billion in assets for the state of Illinois. Um, so we have different portfolios that we help the state of Illinois, um, as well as other local governments and citizens with their programs and facilitating those financial transactions. And he was elected in 2014 and financial education has really been a top priority for him and continues to be. Um, we have the new program, the Finwell Hub, that we'll dive into later. Um, we're excited to bring that to everyone in Illinois. first program I want to start off with is our iCash program. It's always a great place to start because who doesn't love free money, right? Or, or money owed to them. So the Illinois State Treasurer, one of our kind of key jobs and objectives is to safeguard any funds that have been unclaimed by its citizens and then work to return those funds. So we kind of have an office of, of detectives <laughs> that go out there and, and try to seek out these individuals and return that unclaimed property. So you can see on the screen here, we have um, an individual whose parents had an insurance policy and there were leftover funds that weren't properly distributed to him initially. Um, and we were able to return those funds to him. Um, and since 2015, when, <clears throat> excuse me, since 2015, when the treasurer took office, um, over $1 billion in assets have been returned to their rightful owners in Illinois. So I encourage you to go to our iCash website and search your name, search your family members' names, and see if anyone has any unclaimed funds waiting for them. We do have one in four adults um, who search actually find uh, unclaimed property. So the odds are, are in your favor to find some free money. Next up, we have our Illinois 529 College Savings Plan. And just in case you, you aren't familiar, um, a 529 College Savings Plan is a type of investment account um, that can be used for higher education savings, and it's typically um, sponsored by a state. And if you're wondering, 529 sounds weird. It comes from the tax code, sec section 529 of the tax code. Um, it gives special tax breaks. Um, to encourage people to save for education. And when we say saving for higher education, we don't just mean college, universities. This could be trade school, it could be technical school, it could be a professional program. Um, it really is a, a broad array to help you save for college. Um, it, is, it is an investment vehicle though, so always bear in mind there is some risk involved. I've got a short video for you. It explains why it's important to save for college. Thank you. 
teams that we had the best oh. to become adopters. So I really feel that sense of community from the very second that we got. <laughs> All right. Um, so we do have two different 529 college savings plans uh, through the state of Illinois with the treasurer's office. We have our Bright Start, which is a self, um, self-directed self plan. And then we have Bright Directions, which is actually advisor guided. So if you feel more comfortable working with a um, professional financial advisor, but are still interested in getting those tax breaks through the 529 program, um, you can still work with your preferred advisor. Um, and have access to the program, which is fantastic. Uh, one really wonderful thing uh, since the treasurer has been in office um, is that uh, Treasurer Ferrix has been able to lower fees year after year because we really wanna make sure that the program is there to help you. So, you know, getting rid of those different maintenance fees and lowering as many other account fees as possible. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm not, um, not the program director, but if uh, something I should have mentioned at the beginning, you are welcome to ask questions at any time. So feel free to jump in as we go through the, through these specific programs. If you have questions, um, just, you know, shout it out and let me know. <laughs> um, we, we try to enhance our programs as much as possible and, and continue to grow. So kind of growing the Bright Start family, we um, just this January, launched the Illinois First Steps program. And this um, is eligible for all families with a child born or adopted in Illinois since January 1st of 2023, so beginning of this year. And what Illinois First Steps does is it provides a $50 seed deposit to that family, to that child, uh, for their college education. They just have to open a Bright Start or Bright Directions account to claim the $50. Um, I know you're probably thinking, $50? I'm not going to go to college with $50. <laughs> the math doesn't add up. I don't care how good the investment plan is. $50 is not paying for college. Um, but there are a couple of reasons why we still think that the First Steps program is important and helpful for families. Um, the families that we actually have signed up for Bright Start and Bright Directions currently, we know that the data tells us that families on average start saving when their child is seven years old. We're really hoping that this incentivizes them to start uh, saving even younger, perhaps when the child is first born or um, when they're still you know, young, just a couple of years old, just to help that compounding interest do even more work um, for them to, to save even more. And secondly, we hope that it helps encourage families who maybe a, a college savings plan isn't even on their radar, but this um, encourages them to get signed up um, and is something that is brought to their attention. Um, so if you know anyone with a young tot, encourage them to look into it. It's, it's easy. Um, you can go to the Bright Start website and there's a big banner at the top uh, for first steps to learn more. Um, and the claim process is easy. You just follow through 
the same Bright Start um, program steps. Or if you already have a Bright Start account, um, you can go in there and, and there's two different buttons that say, I already have Bright Start or um, I'm brand new. So great, great program out there for people. And we all have our state legislators to thank for this also because it is the state of Illinois funding um, that $50 to, to thank them for investing in, in our children. <clears throat> Another phenomenal program is Illinois ABLE, which stands for Achieving a Better Life Experience. And these accounts give people with disabilities and their families greater financial independence while preserving their federal benefits. So Illinois ABLE is a savings and investment plan that makes it possible for people with disabilities and their families to save and invest money for expenses related to living with a disability. And what's interesting is they say expenses living, to it, living with a disability, but when you go to their website and you actually look at those qualified expenses, it, it's more day-to-day -day living expenses. So your rent, your mortgage, your groceries, transportation, things like that are all covered um, under the plan. So what these counts do, they, they really help solve a long time predicament for people in the disability community. There's you know, that traditional $2,000 asset cap that they cannot exceed and still receive their SSI benefits, their, their social security disability benefits. So what the ABLE program does is it allows them to save money, it allows them to invest in their future and have a better quality of life. Because when you have that $2,000 asset cap, it can make it very difficult to even plan for, you know, maybe you have medical expenses um, for, maybe you need a new wheelchair, new equipment, and that can be quite costly. Or to even plan for future expenses, you know, when you have perhaps a family member who's caring for you and maybe they aren't able to care for you in the future, you're trying to plan for that and make sure that you have um, support in the future. So it's a really, um, you know, much needed um, and helpful program for these folks. Um, and yet again, we have our um, the treasurer's office and advocates and families and legislators to thank for this because they did develop the Illinois ABLE program. It was launched in January of 2017, um, and that followed passage of federal and then state legislation. So this is kind of a new movement to help support these, these individuals. Um, it is a high quality plan, low cost plan um, for savings and investments. Anyone who is an eligible individual or authorized individual um, at any time, no matter what state you live in, can actually sign up for an Illinois ABLE program. There are some extra benefits if you are an Illinois resident though. So if you um, make a contribution to an Illinois ABLE account as an Illinois resident, you can get um, a tax deduction for that. Another really wonderful thing about Illinois ABLE is that they do offer a popular checking and real-time debit card option. So that makes it easy for people to access and use their funds. Like I said, for those um, kind of daily disability expenses like transportation, groceries, things of that nature. So super helpful. Um, and of course, as always, it allows them to exceed that $2,000 asset cap without having to worry about that. Any questions about ABLE? I know it's a somewhat newer program. Mm -hmm. They would be considered an authorized individual. And when you go to the ABLE website, they it's very good at explaining ex exactly that of who is considered an authorized individual. And you know, a caregiver, a family member is, is definitely on the list. Can you also mention about the other account? Yep. Yep. They they won't have some of the same tax benefits because of being an out of stater, but they'll still have access to the plan, which is actually very similar to Bright Start. Because Bright Start, you can access being out of state as well. You just don't receive the same tax benefits. But yeah, absolutely. Any other questions about ABLE? It makes me really excited to hear that you, it sounds like you know someone. Um, so it's always nice. Okay, awesome.
Awesome. It's it's always good to, uh, yeah, nice to to catch someone who. Uh, that's what we want to do, right? We want to spread the word. <laughs> it's nice to make those connections. Next up, we have Illinois Secure Choice, and I'm actually going to start us off with a video on this program because I think it does a really fantastic job of explaining just what the program does. Oh. If you're an Illinois homeowner that pays more than $67 a month for electricity, you may Retirement. Few of us like to think about what we need to save to get there, but most of us are hoping to get there soon. Social Security. More than half of all Americans won't save enough to easily retire. Talk about being married to your job. Yikes. Given all we have growing up, work, family, bills, it's not surprising that research shows that we're 15 times more likely to at work. Because when saving for retirement is done automatically with every paycheck, we think about it. But more that is, until now. Introducing Illinois Secure Choice, a new retirement savings program for Illinois workers without to an employer sponsored plan. Secure Choice is the new easy way for Illinois workers 18 years and older who have reported income and have no savings option at work to start saving for their future. This program is open to full or part-time employees or business owners who are considered employees. Employees who participate get their very own portable Roth individual retirement account that they can take with them from job to job. And because contributions are post-tax, participants can access those contributions tax Employers that have 25 or more employees have been in operation for at least two years and do not secure choice by their enrollment deadline. Once an employer is set up, employees don't need to do anything. They'll automatically start saving a percentage of their paycheck unless they opt out. Employees do not have to participate, and they may opt out or jump back in at any time. If you're an eligible employee, the way it works is 30 days after you are enrolled in the program, a portion of your paycheck will be automatically deducted and invested in the You can adjust your savings rate based on what works best for you. Maybe you start with 3% and work your way up from there. Or maybe you both to make up for lost time. It's all up to you. Remember, with secure choice, it's always your money. You're in charge. For you employers, this is a great program too. Secure Choice allows you to focus on your core operations while still facilitating access to a retirement savings benefit. It consists of adding employees and sending payroll deductions from your contributing employees. Pretty great deal, right? Secure Choice will help build a stronger future for millions of people by allowing them to take control of funding their tomorrows. Illinois Secure Choice, a new choice for retirement. I am securechoice.com. All right. Um, so as I said, it is a retirement savings program, and it really makes it easy for workers to save, and it makes it even simpler for employers to um, facilitate for them. There it goes. Um, it's kind of a, a sad statistic, but 22% of Americans actually have less than $5,000 saved for retirement. Um, it, it's a little concerning because we know that that is not going to get them very far. Um, it's not going to put them in a good financial situation. Um, it really can be problematic for that individual and for their families. Um, and it can also be a, a strain on um, state resources as well, attempting to help them as they continue to age. Um, and, and are perhaps not able to be in the workforce and bring in their own income. But with Illinois Secure Choice as a state-facilitated retirement program, um, it makes it easy for workers to save their own money. So I know you could kind of see a little bit of representation in the video of 
you know, traditional jobs that you wouldn't think would have access to retirement programs, right? Like a hairdresser or someone who works in a restaurant or in the hotel industry perhaps or working for small businesses. This really is um, helpful so that the employer isn't spending a ton of money trying to facilitate the program, um, but the worker still has access to a high quality plan that still has low fees. So a, a great benefit to everyone. Um, some of the um, other benefits, you know, it is their own money in a Roth IRA um, and it is handled through payroll deductions because they've done research and typically when um, someone is, available, is able to save through payroll deductions, they are much more likely to do so. Um, it's also the reason that the program is set up to auto enroll people. Whenever they are auto enrolled, they are less likely to opt out rather than the flip of that and saying, oh, you must opt in, there'd be much fewer people actually taking advantage and actually socking that important money away for their retirement. So they've, they've done a lot of research to, to set the program up for success and set the workers up for success as well. Um, and it's great that it is portable because it is the worker's money and it is their account and they can take it with them from job to job. So it's not tied so specifically with their employer like a lot of traditional plans um, for larger companies. So that's really nice. Um, and if you happen to know any small business owners, um, it, it is actually a state law now um, that employers are required for businesses that have been uh, in business for at least two years and don't offer a qualified retirement plan, they are required to register and facilitate secure choice. So I know the, the video may have specifically mentioned the 25 or more employees that was, you know, a specific time deadline for that. And then we're, we're getting closer and closer to, to reach businesses all the way down to five employees. Um, Something else that wasn't in the video um, that is possible now is people can self-enroll in the program. So even if your employer doesn't offer it, um, you are still welcome to go to Illinois Secure Choice and get a plan set up. Um, so a good for instance is you, know, you don't work for an employer that facilitates the program or you may be self-employed. This is a really wonderful opportunity for someone who's self-employed to have those low program fees um, and still be able to to save, so it's, it's really helpful. Um, businesses do not have to wait for the deadline on the screen in order to enroll, so they can enroll at any time um, if you know someone. Any questions with Secure Choice? This is another program that's still relatively new that they're rolling out these different waves of employers. So there is, because it's state law, there is, um, oh, what's the word? I'm, it's escaping me. Basically, the IRS will penalize them for not facilitating the program. I believe they, you know, I assume that there is a warning process or, or some time in between um, before that happens, but I do know that they will eventually start taking um, action against employers who, who aren't doing it. And it is, like I said, through the IRS, it, it becomes a tax situation at that point. I'm not sure what the penalties are. Yes. Yeah. So, so let's say you uh, were, for instance, self-employed or working another job where you had the secure choice plan. So you would still keep that account. And let's say you got a new job and then that employer does offer a retirement plan. So you would go ahead and you would use that employer retirement plan, but you would still maintain your account through Illinois secure choice because that's still your account, those are still your funds. It's kind of similar to if it was another employer with an old account. Um, I know it depends on the employer. Sometimes they want you to 
um, liquidate and transfer, and other ones will say, no, you need to keep it in our plan in order to you know, access those funds at a later date. Oh. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sure thing. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Thank you guys for stopping by. Yeah, feel free to grab brochure in the back. You'll definitely want the, the Illinois Financial Wellness Hub, uh, Finwell Hub brochure um, to look that up. That'll be the biggie. Any other questions on Secure Choice before we move on? All right. Um, finally, home is another program that helps Illinois residents purchase or refinance a home, as well as prevent existing home an existing home from going into foreclosure. So the program is suitable for residents who have difficulty qualifying for a conventional sustainable mortgage because of factors such as bruise credit or debt to income ratio. Um, and since its establishment in 2002, it has guaranteed over $80 million in loans to more than 600 families. Um, eligible financial institutions partner with the treasurer's office, and then we guarantee 10% of the purchase price for a five-year period on a fair rate home loan. The program does really try to focus on lower to middle income uh, families trying to buy or refinance a home, um, but are unable to do so without that 10% guarantee to the financial institution. Um, I would really encourage you, if, if this is something that you are interested in, I believe this is a program with a lot of nuance. Um, that, Like I said at the beginning, I'm, I'm not the program director, but the website should give you some really great information. Um, and if you have additional questions, there will be a contact us information on the website. This one's a little trickier to find. I don't have a direct link for this one. So if you go to the treasurer's website, under the Individuals tab, if you scroll down, you will find our Finally Home program. I also think there's a, an easy search bar on the treasurer's website as well. If you can't find it, I'm a big fan of making it easy and just searching it, <laughs> and it'll pop up for you. We're, we're getting really close to our goal-setting activity, so, so bear, with, bear with me as we finish up some of these um, program descriptions. Next up is Money Minded Illinois, and this program was launched in 2018 as a financial literacy program for teachers and families in the state of Illinois, and it is completely free. So we have curriculum that is available for uh, first through middle school. Um, it, like I said, completely free. It is available on our website. It is downloadable. Teachers, families, librarians, are welcome to download these materials. There are a lot of wonderful activities in there for kids. So one thing that I hear a lot from teachers is that there are only so many minutes in the day. They're incredibly busy, their schedules are incredibly full, and sometimes they don't have the time to teach the full booklet of curriculum that we do offer. So one thing I always like to encourage folks to do is if you have a half day, or you, know, you have some in-between time, you can pull out individual activities to do with the kids, and there are still wonderful opportunities for them to learn about financial literacy, even if they aren't getting that full unit of curriculum. It's still an opportunity to introduce it to children, um, because another fun fact that you might not know about is that um, children actually start to develop and kind of settle into their money habits by the age of seven. Now, I know when I read that stat, I couldn't imagine as a seven-year-old that my money habits would already be pretty settled in. Um, so it's important to have those conversations with your children to make sure that they understand um, how to, as, as they like to say, how to earn, save, spend, and give. Um, those are kind of the, the typical guidelines. Um, and back to the curriculum. Uh, this curriculum was actually made by teachers for teachers, and it meets all Illinois State Board education standards specific to financial literacy within the social studies um, curriculum, or not curriculum, within the standards for social studies. So like I said earlier, very flexible ability to use the entire unit or just individual activities. 
And if you go to the Money Minded homepage on our website, um, there are also some additional resources on there for children. So you can search, like I said, by grade. Uh, we'll have elementary, middle, and high school portals on there as well. Um, different lesson plans, different videos, and other activities for either the classroom or for at home. Any questions about the program for our youngsters? All right. And um, I, I did mention to Eva, I brought some bookmarks with me for Money Minded, so they are in the back if you, if you know a little kid who is an avid reader, uh, grab, grab a bookmark in the back. Now we're to my favorite topic. This is my program, <laughs> the, the Illinois Financial Wellness Hub. Uh, we actually did a pilot of the Finwell Hub with state employees and retirees, and it went well, and we decided to launch it to all Illinois residents. So we've just started this phase um, about a month ago where we were able to release um, that information to the public and start getting people onboarded. So I have another uh, short video for you with our treasurer. He will introduce the program and give you a little tour around the website. And for residency right now, wish me luck. Grandma me has again been a lifesaver with my application. She's helping me write. Hi, I'm Illinois State Treasurer oh. Michael Burke. No, what happened there? We go. I'm excited to announce the Illinois Financial Wellness Hub, which provides free resources to help Illinois residents plan a brighter financial future. That platform includes dynamic tools and courses delivering a highly personalized and interactive learning experience to fit your needs. You can watch videos and webinars, read articles and infographics, and utilize tools, courses, and start your guide. Whether you are just getting started or nearing the finish line of your personal finance journey, the Finwell Hub is here for you through it all. Financing higher education and making your first budget, buying or refinancing a home. Life events can present new challenges, which is why Finwell Hub resources are available on demand when you need them most. Like saving for an emergency fund, planning for a child's education, or caring for an aging parent. Retirement planning courses can also help you make better decisions to ensure your golden years are truly golden. Visit Finwell Hub today to create your free account and start planning a bright financial future. Hi, I'm Bill All right. Uh, as the video mentioned, um, content on the platform is 100% on demand, which is really fantastic. There are a few live webinars that are offered on occasion, but they're always recorded and then posted for later viewing. So it's on your schedule when you need it most. Um, and our Enrich um, vendor um, who runs the platform also facilitates access to a certified personal finance coach so they can help you answer any more specific individual questions that you might have. Now, I, I need to note that they are not uh, financial advisors, so they cannot give you any investment advice um, or, or tell you what to do in the market, but they can help you kind of assess your financial situation. They can make um, resource suggestions to kind of help you on your way um, and kind of help you with those next steps. Um, they're really great at, at navigating um, the website as well and the, using those resources to, to your advantage to, to make it work for you. Um, something that I would recommend, um, so to just jump in and get started with the Finwell Hub. So go online and get registered. And the first thing it's gonna have you do is a financial wellness checkup. And the checkup will ask you different questions. It'll ask you about your stress level related to your finances. It'll ask you what types of topics specifically that you're interested in. Um, a bunch of different things to kind of gauge your level of interest. And the reason it does that is for one, to help you track your progress because there are opportunities for you to go back in and do um, a checkup follow-up. <laughs> 
And that way you can really see that progress. You can see that improvement. And then it also kind of serves as like our, our favorite algorithms and friends on Netflix and Spotify, it will suggest specific content that you, you know, kind of based on what you're interested in. So it'll have those buckets and it'll say, oh, you're interested in this. So I think you might like this particular course or this video, this article. Um, it's really great at helping to narrow down the very vast array of resources available on the website and saying, hey, you might want to check this out. Um, it, it makes it easier. And that's why I say to just jump in. Don't let the endless scroll happen. We've all scrolled through Netflix for like 30 minutes and still not picked anything. <laughs> so, so I really recommend, you know, identify that number one goal and go ahead and start a course and get started. Another thing that's really fantastic about the platform is that you can continue to build those skills because there is new content loaded every month. Um, so there's always something new to learn, always um, more to build on. Um, and if you're someone who really likes to kind of dig in and understand kind of your personality and how that affects your finances, there's also the money personality quiz. Um, and this will tell you things like you're skeptical or you're cautious. And it'll tell you how your personality actually affects how you spend and save. Um, it's, it's really interesting. It's one of those quizzes you take and you're like, hmm, how do you know this about me? This makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Um, so really great to kind of help you analyze and, and get to know yourself a little bit better and how it affects your finances. Um, some other things that are really great, some popular features, like I mentioned, there are courses on there. They will recommend certain ones. You can kind of see at the top here it has recommended up there. Um, so you can look at just those recommended choices or if you're someone who really wants to see the full array, you can click on view all. And what is nice about the view all option that I like is when you do that, it opens up some additional information and it'll show you that the course is kind of labeled as beginner or it's intermediate or advanced. And it'll also give you a time estimation off to the side. So they typically range anywhere between 15 and 30 minutes um, to do a course. But it's really great because you're like, maybe I don't have 30 minutes. You know, I've got 15 minutes. I got to go pick up a kid and then go somewhere else. So it helps you kind of estimate how much time you have to um, put towards it that day. And the courses are really nice and um, interactive and kind of individualized. They'll ask you some questions here or there and kind of provide additional information based on what you say. Um, so really helpful. Um, there are also, you can kind of see down here, we have the tools, um, different analyzers and trackers. The tools are really fantastic because they do a lot of that really tricky math for you. <laughs> you plug in your information, it'll tell you, yes, you're on track for retirement, you're doing a really great job, or it'll say, you know, here's the graph of what you are looking at right now, here's kind of where your shortfall is, and maybe here's what you can do to get your retirement plan back on track. Um, so super helpful tools. We'll also dig into some other tools um, as we get into our goal setting activity in just a minute. One final slide here, just to, before we get started on our activity, to encourage you to go to the Treasurer's website. We do have a full tab for financial education. Um, it's all broken out by different um, kind of age range. So um, student age, young adults, parents, people in the disability community, senior citizens, kind of a, a range of different resources that may be helpful for people um, in those particular stages of life. So I encourage you to, to scroll through those and, and see uh, why, what might be important to you. Now I did try to, I, I warned you at the beginning, I did try to go a little quickly through the programs as much as possible. Any final questions on those other programs before we jump into our goal setting activity? Well, let's jump right in. Um, it looks like you both have the worksheet, so that is fantastic. Um, and now that I know you have your worksheet, I'm actually going to ask you not to look at it <laughs> and close your eyes because we're going to give you the time and the space to think about your personal finance goals. So don't write anything down just yet. I want you to envision your future like you're watching yourself in a movie. 
You're welcome to join us, Eva. Are you retired and sitting on a beach with your spouse? Are you watching your child cross the stage at college graduation? Are you caring for an aging parent? Are you building your dream home? Are you relaxed and not thinking about your finances because you are financially secure? Think about what's important to you. Do you aspire to open your own business one day? Or do you want to retire early and travel the world? There are no right or wrong answers. Now you can go ahead and open your eyes. And now we have on the screen and at the top of your worksheet some examples of goals to save for. These are just common goals, certainly not, not, not an exhaustive list, um, but just something to kind of jog your, your memory and get you thinking as we start kind of narrowing down and thinking about your specific goals. Because big or small, your goals are really going to help you get where you're going. And it's okay and, and actually encouraged to start small and really build on that because you really want to get that motivation and get that momentum. And sometimes having those smaller goals first and kind of building up is a really helpful way to kind of help you um, on your way. So with that in mind, as you're kind of starting to go through in your mind, what you might want to save for, or perhaps you have an, a, a different financial goal like the ones at the bottom that are less specific to a dollar amount, but you really want to track your spending or increase your credit score, things like that. Next, we're gonna look into having SMART goals because it's really important that your goal um, is working the, as best that it can because you want it to be specific SMART goals should be measurable, it should be attainable and achievable, it should be relevant or realistic, and it should be time-based and time-measured. Um, honestly, I think being achievable is one of the most important things that you can do when setting a goal because much like a starvation diet fails, a starvation budget is going to fail as well. It's just so discouraging when you work really hard and it still isn't quite good enough to that very high bar that you've set for yourself. So if you start a little bit lower and work your way up, um, you, you have a, a higher likelihood of, of success with that. Um, and I also think that that's helpful in thinking about the time horizon for your goal as well. You wanna make sure that it's not too short, that you don't, you know, you won't have enough time to achieve it, or you make it so long that you really kind of lose track of things along the way. Um, so it can be really helpful to, to kind of narrow those down. And next we're gonna look at an example of a SMART goal. So an example of a SMART goal might be, I will pay off my $5,000 in credit card debt in the next three years. So it's specific and measurable because it's, you know, $5,000 in credit card debt. And then it's relevant and time-based because in three years, this is what we're going to do. And of course it's relevant because paying off debt is always a good thing uh, to do, especially high interest um, debt like credit card debt. And then of course there's that tricky one that's um, trying to identify if it's achievable. This is one of those tools I was mentioning. The credit card pay down tool on the website is really fantastic and helpful. You can plug in your information and say, this is how much I have on my card. This is what my interest rate is. And then you can kind of play around and say, I think I can put this much towards it monthly. And it will tell you how much you are going to pay in interest over the course of that time. It's gonna tell you how long it's going to take to pay it off. And it has a really great graph to kind of show you um, those different options. And you can change the amount just to see what happens with that graph um, and to see where that lands you. So super helpful to help like I said, do all of the complicated math for you um, so you can focus on the important things like, like reaching those goals. Now, we've thought about our top priorities. Hopefully you're starting to kind of put together in your minds writing those SMART goals, but what's next? You really need to think about what resources you need to achieve those goals. Uh, maybe you need to do more research to even determine um, 
what your goal might actually cost. You know, perhaps you want to go on a European vacation. Well, how much is that really going to cost? Um, and you've got to kind of dig a little bit deeper to find that information. Some other resources that you might need along the way could be learning more through courses and tools on the Finwell Hub. It could be seeking guidance from a professional financial advisor. Um, maybe you, you need job training or an advanced degree for a promotion because higher pay, um, you know, increasing your income is really the best way for you to eventually reach those goals. Another way you can help set yourself up for success is to think about what milestones you might need to achieve before reaching your big goal. So a, a really good example of this is you may have a large goal of buying a home. That's a very large undertaking. And there's likely going to be multiple steps that you need to take before you're able to make that happen. You know, maybe you need to save for a down payment. You need to improve your credit score, reduce your current debt load, other things. So being able to identify those milestones um, and kind of set those smaller goals on your journey can help you because it's gonna give you that momentum. You say, okay, in a year, I'm gonna have this part of this bigger goal knocked out and you're just gonna keep chipping away at that larger goal and it's gonna give you momentum and give you, uh, <laughs> one, of, one of our presenters before liked to call it mojo. Um, I really like that, that term, give you money mojo. So whatever it takes to keep you motivated. Um, and, and it helps you keep track of things. Like I said before, you know, when you have those larger time horizons, it can, it can be easier to get a little lost along the way. So this will help keep you focused and on the right path. So hopefully as you've, um, you know, been thinking about your time horizon, you've been visualizing things, hopefully you already have, you know, kind of a time base in mind because we talked about making smart goals and time is important. But if not, here's a good reminder of some different kind of goal horizons um, that you might be considering for, for your particular goal. Um, it's possible that you won't have a goal for every time horizon. That's, that's totally fine, what, whatever works for you in your particular situation. But just keep thinking about your goals, keep thinking about the resources that you need um, and those important milestones that you may have along the way before you reach that big goal, before you reach that full journey. Now I'm gonna give you a few minutes to let you think, to let you write down on your worksheets um, really you know, what you want those goals to be. And I know finances can be touchy. So if you have any questions that you'd like to ask but you don't feel comfortable asking in a room full of people, um, feel free to kind of raise your hand and I can come over and I'd be happy to answer um, any questions that you have. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap us up with a few more slides, but certainly keep, keep writing your goals and keep working through them. Um, it, it's very possible, you know, budgeting typically goes hand in hand with um, goal setting. So if you need a little bit of help getting started with a budget, the Finwell Hub has a really fantastic budgeting tool and something that's kind of unique about it that other apps may not have is it actually has a section specifically for your savings goals. So you can you know, name those specifically like, yes, I wanna save more for retirement. I want to save for an emergency fund to make sure we're prepared for that car repair that is inevitable. Um, or you want to um, save for a vacation. You know, it's, it's nice to be able to list each of those out and kind of see that happen um, specifically. Um, you can actually plug in your information into that budgeting tool. Um, and this is something I, I should have mentioned previously when we were talking about the, um, the checkup. So if, if anyone has any concerns about their data privacy or things of that nature, um, please do not be concerned. No one can see your personal private information that is entered. No one can see that you specifically answered the checkup in this way. I can only see aggregate data on the back end that tells me, you know, 500 people out of the 1,200 people registered have used the budget tool or that they, you know, have taken the checkup. Um, so just to assuage any concerns that someone's <laughs> reading that information, if that makes you uncomfortable, it's no worries. It's all aggregate data, nothing tied directly to you. Um, and lastly, 
Um, I know I mentioned, of course, that the Finwall Hub has all on-demand resources, which is really fantastic. But we also kicked off just last week. We had our very first uh, live session with the treasurer and our special guest. Um, it was this special guest, Dr. Harold Pollack, um, who co-authored the book, The Index Card, Why Personal Finance Doesn't Have to Be Complicated. Um, talks, uh, he talked a little bit during, during the session about money mojo um, and kind of having that motivation. So it was a really fun, uh, fun conversation between the treasurer and, and Dr. Pollack. Uh, they talked about goal setting and budgeting, and they shared some really practical, helpful tips um, during that. Uh, and what's great about the webinar, we did have a lot of live audience questions, um, so that's always nice. Uh, the recording will be available on our website soon. Um, we're just getting some, some things fine-tuned with, with uh, the recording there. And we do have two more webinars coming up. Uh, we'll be discussing the three-legged stool of retirement security in May. And then we'll be doing a deep dive on Social Security in June, and that'll be focused on Social Security in retirement. Um, the links for those are very long and cumbersome, so they don't really work for the slide, but I'm, I'm happy to email them to you if you'd like to share them with other people or, or post them somewhere. Uh, we'd love to have anyone tune in live. They are at noon, so hopefully, um, if you have access to a computer at the, the lunch hour, um, or on your phone, you can dial in and listen to the webinar because we uh, try to keep them fast paced and uh, conversational as much as possible, but still a few slides um, with some, some key takeaways. So first of all, I wanna say thank you so much for coming out, especially when I saw the weather report, I was like, oh my gosh, no one is showing up for this. It's gonna be gross outside. Uh, so thank you for coming out and give, your guys, give yourselves a pat on the back because sometimes taking that first step um, to really take control of your finances is, is sometimes the hardest. So congrats to you for getting it started, for jumping in um, and making it happen for yourself and for your family. So thank you so much. And I'll, I'll still be hanging around if you have any questions or want to keep working on your um, worksheets. We have brochures for the Finwell Hub in the back that has our QR code and our web address on it so you can scan and take it with you, um, as well as my business card if you have any other questions. Feel free to reach out. Thank you.